his resurrection to eternal life. And throughout today, we've got opportunities to celebrate. Don't forget tonight, we've got a service of praise with baptisms as well, so you'd be very welcome to come back later. But um, uh, as 1 Thessalonians says, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we're here to celebrate. If you're willing and able, why don't you stand with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time of Easter as we celebrate Jesus who is alive. As we pour out our hearts in praise and worship now, come by your spirit we pray and just fall afresh on this place this Easter day. Fall afresh on each of us. Shape us to be more like Jesus and accept our praise and our worship that we offer in the power of Christ. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. We come to our prayers of confession. So uh, I will say the words in the lighter type and there's some words on the screen going to come up if you respond with the bold ones when they come. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your Son. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth and strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the church family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us, <clears throat> let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to the followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer, and I believe that I'm leading the prayers today. I'm not leading the prayers today. Adele is now going to lead the prayers for us. Thank you, Adele. Let's pray. Let us set aside our constant thoughts of chores, pressures and distractions and come to the feet of him who gives us life. And not just in this world, but the promise of everlasting life in the next. Thank you, Lord, that this promise is forever nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we worship you. We adore you and we thank you. We cannot use strong enough words to express our deep gratitude for all you have done for us. Thank you that it is finished and help us to remember when times get tough that the ultimate battle is already won. Death has been defeated. Christ our Saviour has risen again and will come back for us at the end of these times. Thank you, Lord, that our hope in you is not empty but full of the promise of the cross. Help us to keep your victory in mind as we contemplate all the suffering that we are witnessing across the globe right now. Whether it's the cost of living crisis that is pushing more and more people in the, in the UK as well as overseas deeper into poverty. The effect of wars that are leaving starvation, devastation and grief are the result of climate change that is threatening livelihoods. Help us to see you in the midst. We pray for those suffering and ask for an outpouring of your love and grace over them. We pray also that you would um, stimulate world leaders, give them wisdom and empower them to make good decisions, decisions that will improve the lives of the people they are appointed to serve and the lives of those in poorer nations. We pray also for the sick in our own church family and lift up to you their suffering, whether it be mental, physical or spiritual, please put your hand upon them. Thank you for the leadership team at St George's 
And we commit Alice to you and ask you to bless her journey as she prepares to take up a new post. We pray that she will be a blessing to many and that you will help her to settle in and form friendships. We pray for the successful appointment of a replacement for Alice at St George's and ask you to prepare the heart and mind of your chosen candidate that the appointment will be yours. As we express our thanks to the Lord on this Easter day and consider how we should live our lives in response to his most wondrous gift, I'd like to close with a prayer from Emmanuel Murangira, who leads Tearfun's work in Rwanda. Let me be your hands and feet among those in need of your divine providence, not to be a provider, but to serve what you have provided, not to be seen, but to cause those that I serve to see you, not to be commended, but to cause them to glorify you. Amen. Adele, thank you so much. You did a much better job than I would have done. I was just going boring Church of England liturgy, and there we go. So thank you for, for praying. And it's great to unite our prayers with our tear fund partners as we remember the global church today that celebrates the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to hear about the resurrection from the Gospel of St. John. So if you want to grab a blue Bible and turn to John 20, that's on page 1089. 1089, Irene's going to come and read for us. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon, to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that I had what he had said to her. This is the word of the Lord.
Should we stand together?
stars they went the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon The Son of God was made in darkness, a battle in the grave, a war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away. We 
sing hallelujah the lamb is overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb is overcome we sing everyone. Let's pray as we come to God's word. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Easter Sunday and help us as we reflect on the message of the resurrection to hear what you're saying to each of us individually today. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to ask for a slide to come up on the screens. And uh, this is part of my journey this last week. Um, I saw this uh, in a newspaper article on the internet about... um, Iceland. Iceland were promoting a new type of hot cross bun. You're going to see a picture of it in a moment. And um, there it is. I want you to look at that carefully. What do you think is wrong with that hot cross bun? Just look at it very carefully. Have you noticed anything that might be slightly different to normal? It's a hot tick bun. Yeah, so what should be on there? A cross should be on there. But I looked at that and I thought, hmm... Iceland. I could use that on Easter Sunday. So I was going to Lincoln. I googled Iceland stores. There aren't any in Stamford. There are some in Peterborough, but I was going to Lincoln. So on the way to the cathedral, because we had a service, the clergy had a service Ben and I had to go to. So I found an Iceland in Lincoln. I drove in. I parked my car. I went in and I looked around. I couldn't see any hot cross buns anywhere. And then I said to an assistant, "Um, I've been reading on the internet, look, about these hot tick buns. Scratched head, I haven't seen, don't know anything about that, sir. We haven't got any here. Our hot cross buns are on the other side of that account. So I went round, lo and behold, a whole load of ordinary hot cross buns on the other side. He said, you could ring our wholesaler up down in town. They'll, they might have some. So I rang the guy on Titton Road in Lincoln to say, have you got any hot tick buns? Oh, no, never heard of what you're talking about. We haven't got any of those. And slowly it dawns on you that this is a marketing exercise to make everybody think, let's go. It puts Iceland in everybody's minds because, of course, all the Conservative MPs disgusted of Tunbridge Wells say, how dare you change the message of Easter? And Iceland go, thank you very much for giving us so much publicity. Okay, so there's the hot tick bun, but I'm going to come back to the hot tick bun because actually it does make a point for Easter Sunday. But I've got some other things in here. I do have traditional versions of the hot cross bun. And here we go, fruited and spiced. Um, No, you can't have them. Okay, so let me get out. Because, are you interested by any chance? Well, just look at that yummy hot cross bun. Ah, right. Who had a hot cross bun on Good Friday? Who had one on Easter Saturday? Who's going to have one today? Yeah, yeah, there, you've had one already. I had one, on, one for breakfast as well. And you've made some. Fantastic. Well, the good news about our hot cross bun reminds us of Good Friday and what happened on Good Friday. So we remember the cross. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus died so that we could be forgiven. Sometimes if you turn it that way, I guess that's why they did a hot tick bun, because it's not a hot wrong bun. You know how you get a cross against some of the stuff you've done wrong? So, actually, Jesus died for the wrong things that we've done. He died on the cross for us, to put us right with God. So that's Good Friday. That's what we remember with a hot cross bun. I shall put that carefully back and eat it later. Now, I've got something else in here. I've got an ordinary brown bat. That doesn't look very interesting, does it? But in the Easter story, this represents the stone that was rolled away. Okay, so when you get home, you're going to be able to do gospel presentations to each other 
with your hot cross buns and your baps. Okay, so here it is, the stone that was rolled away. And in our reading from John's Gospel, Mary got there in the early morning. But when Mary got to the tomb, what she noticed was the stone had been rolled away. We know from the other Gospels that the women who were going to dress the body of Jesus were saying, who's going to roll the stone away? When they get there, they find that it's actually been rolled away. And Mary looks in, she thinks, somebody's taken the body of Jesus. Where have they put him? And she's in a fluster, so she runs back to the other disciples, and she goes, somebody's stolen the body of Jesus. That right, The tomb's open, uh, and we read in John's Gospel, Peter and John race to the tomb. Okay, John gets there first, because he's the younger man. And uh, he stands at the edge looking in because the stone's been rolled away. Peter gets in there and he goes straight in. He goes straight in to see. And what does he find in the empty tomb? Who can tell me what Jesus... What do you mean he found nothing? He didn't find any crumbs of bread. What did he find? Anybody tell me what... Sorry? Cloths. Yeah, he found the cloths. The, body, the stuff that... The, Jesus' body was wrapped up in cloths. And he found, when Peter went in, that it was as though the body of Jesus had come up through the cloth and they just gently sunk back onto the stone where the body of Jesus was. And they're scratching their heads going, well, certainly Peter's scratching his head saying, not quite sure what's going on here. But you know, the, the, the stone was rolled away not to let Jesus out, but to let the world look in to say, Jesus isn't here. He's risen. And so John, this is important, so John looked, he, he looked from the edge, but it says he saw and he believed. He knew, he knew Jesus, he saw the grave clothes just drop back down, and he looked into the empty tomb because it's there to let us look in, and he, got, and he believed. He knew that Jesus was alive. So when you think of your... Hot cross bun, you think of Good Friday. Jesus died for us on the cross so that we could be forgiven. When you look at your back, you remember the stone that was rolled away because Jesus is alive. And the empty tomb is for us to look in and go, he's not there. He's risen. Just like those two angels when Mary looks in. Woman, why are you crying? Look, he's not here. And then let's come back to my hot tick bun. Can we have that image up and leave it up on the screen for a bit? So we're going to come back to the hot tick bun. You see, I like the hot tick bun for Easter Sunday because the hot tick bun, the resurrection is God's yes to Jesus. It's God saying yes to Jesus. See, the resurrection is the vindication of Jesus. It's God saying yes to Jesus for coming into our world as a baby at Christmas, the incarnation, becoming one with us. The resurrection is God's yes to Jesus for being baptized by John because he identifies with us, sinful humanity, in that baptism. The resurrection is God's yes to Jesus when he died on the cross on Good Friday. And Jesus said, it is finished. He's finished the work, tick. The resurrection is God's yes to To Jesus, Jesus, you are the Son of God with power by your resurrection from the dead. You are Lord over the living and the dead, and you're going to come again. You see, the resurrection is God's yes to Jesus. Jesus is Lord. And Mary discovers this personally for herself in our reading from John's Gospel. First of all, she thinks the man behind her who says... Woman, why are you crying? She thinks it's the gardener. Where have you put him? Let me go and fetch him. And then when he says her name, Mary, Mary discovers that the resurrection of Jesus is personal. It's for me. It's for you. Jesus is alive for us. And we can know him like Mary encountered him on that first Easter Sunday. And what was Mary's response? Jesus said, Will you go and tell your brothers, go and tell the disciples that you've seen me, that I'm alive? And so, of course, what Mary does is take the message of the first resurrection, of that resurrection, she takes it to the disciples and tells them, I've seen the Lord, and this is what he's told me to say. So as we think 
about the message of Easter on this Easter Sunday. We have the message of the cross. God loves me. He sent Jesus into the world to die for me that I may be forgiven. We have the message of the empty tomb. Jesus has risen. Hallelujah. So Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Look, how do we go? Ben. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, you're getting good at it. So we remember the empty tomb. And of course, that's so that we might believe ourselves. We look into the empty tomb and we can believe that Jesus is alive. And the tick reminds us that Jesus is Lord. God has said yes to Jesus for everything that he's done. And like Mary, those who believe in the resurrection of Jesus, those who've counted Jesus Christ, we're commissioned to go and tell other people that Jesus is alive. I've seen the Lord, and I'd love you to know him for yourself. Let's pray together as we finish. Just thank you that Jesus died on the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. And thank you that Jesus is Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for the message of Easter. We give you thanks that Jesus died on the cross so that we could be forgiven. And maybe for the first time today, we want to say, Lord, would you forgive me for the wrong things that I have done, for living my life my own way, not noticing what you have done for me? And of course, Lord, we want to thank you for the empty tomb, that Jesus has defeated death for us. And we want to say on this Easter Sunday, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We believe in the resurrection. And as we look at the tick on that bun, Lord Jesus, we want to say thank you that you're Lord. You're Lord because you obeyed your Father perfectly. You're Lord because you've been raised from the dead and have defeated every enemy that stands against us. And would you give us grace to be messengers like Mary, messengers of the resurrection to those around us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Martin. That was uh, not the first gospel presentation using bread. We come to one that was 2,000 years older than that, as Jesus instituted us to remember him in bread and wine. And uh, as we do that, we want to say that everyone who knows and loves the Lord Jesus is welcome to receive bread and wine around this, his table. Um, As we're an all-age congregation today, I would suggest that families come together in groups And uh, children, chat to your parents as to whether you want to receive communion or whether you want to receive a a special prayer of blessing as you come forward. We're happy for different families to decide what's appropriate for you in those contexts. Although I would say that the normal order of things is that you are baptised before you receive communion. Now, we're not massively strict on this, but if you want to receive communion today, that's great. Come and receive communion. When you get home, start the conversation with mum or dad about how to then go on to be baptised so that we can get you through the waters of baptism as part of God's church family. We've got gluten-free bread and alcohol-free wine. If you need gluten-free or alcohol-free, then just come to this middle section here because we're going to have four different places to receive. Cue my brilliant map that everyone laughs at every week. I want to hear a woo when this comes up. We've got a map coming up. No, wait, wait for it. Don't, don't go early. Make it feel spontaneous. So, just to explain, back row over there, you come round this way and go round that way. Back row over there, you come round this way and back to your seat that way. Back rows in the middle, you come down and round that way, following on through. And then you three seats in the side aisles. You just hold fire and whoever wins the race between here or here you go and join on wherever it makes most sense it's as simple and as complicated as that well from the ridiculous to the sublime let's take a moment of quiet as we prepare ourselves for communion
and some words will appear on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you didn't reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With the whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those who are helping serve, if you'd like to come forward.
Father, we thank you so much for feeding us with bread and wine in remembrance of all that Jesus has done for us. And as we celebrate this Easter Sunday, Lord, we pray that you would uh, continue to fill your church with your Holy Spirit. Make us effective in telling others about the Lord Jesus and be with us as we go from here. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand and sing a great anthem of Easter Day, Thine Be the Glory. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As we come to the end of our service, we've got tea and coffee available at the back there. Do help yourself to that. And prayer ministry available at the front. A couple of people appear with red lanyards. They'd be really pleased to pray with you. If there's anything in the service that you want to pray about, then do come forward for that. But a final prayer as we 
draw our service to an end. Father, we thank you for being with us today by your Spirit as we've celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray that the same power that raised Christ from the dead would be at work in each of us this Easter. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those who you love and those for whom you pray this Easter. Amen. Amen.